Hey guys, happy Friday. It's almost time for the weekend. Hopefully you have awesome weekend plans. We may or may not have snow in Atlanta. I'm kind of trying to convince my hubby to let us stay an extra night at the mountain house that we have because I want to see it snow up there. We'll see, I don't know. We'd be taking a chance we might be stuck. So he's thinking we're gonna be stuck at home instead of stuck at our other home, but we'll see. Anyways, if you can hear me right now, you're one of our playbackers. Let me know that you're watching this playback and then some of you may jump on live. That's usually how it goes. But we're see, I am loving, 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 loving the gratitude posts that we are doing now. So if you haven't noticed yet, this week it was Jill. Hi, Ebony. Jill was our gratitude leader for the week. So every day this week, Monday through Friday, we're doing this. She put up a post where we could put in the comments what we were grateful for that day. And if you were on the Belinda Ellsworth training, I believe it was last week, one of the things that she was sharing was through some of her research, it's proven, okay, proven that people who are very successful and reach their goals, like 40% of them, um, I think that, that this is approximately what she said, but 40% of them have like daily gratitude, you know, so much of it is mindset. And I actually have been getting a lot out of these uh, threads each day because, you know, I usually am pretty good about every day writing in my agenda what I'm grateful for that day. I try to do a little bit of gratitude every day. But what I'm getting out of this, besides sharing, is reading all of yours. So, you know, you can't be feeling gratitude and feeling scarcity at the same time. It's just, it's, it's great. It's a great um, mood booster. Even when I'm feeling, you know, joyous already, it just, I read your gratitude and it makes me even more joyful. So I just think it's a great habit that we're gonna continue through the rest of the year. So next week, Pam is gonna be our gratitude leader. So look for her post once a day. She'll start a thread where we can go and put our gratitude. And we have a lineup of um, different ones of you putting the gratitude starter up for each day and we're rotating by week so we have a few of you that have signed up for certain weeks but if you want to get on that rotation where you'll be the gratitude leader for that week uh just let us know hi jill um and we'll put you into the rotation because i think it's fabulous i just i love it i love reading all the things that you're grateful for too even when it's just something small you know it doesn't have to be huge i think the first day i was sharing um my gratitude that day was seriously for my nespresso machine i'm not even lying <laughs> because i just go over to my machine in the morning and i barely touch it for it to open i put a pot in barely touch it for it to close and i just push a button on top and it makes like the most perfect cup of coffee every time so quickly and I don't have to put any thought into it or anything and I get so much joy from a perfect cup of coffee you know and then I'm also so filled with gratitude because I can afford it you know so like it doesn't have to be huge mind-blowing um gratitude some days it will be I mean some days it's you're grateful for something that's really much larger than you, you know? It just varies and it, it doesn't matter so much what it is, big or small. It's just that you're feeling that way and the sharing of it is so contagious and it just makes everybody feel so like warm, fuzzy. I love it, I love it. I'm so glad that we're doing it. So thank you, Jill, for this week and looking forward to Pam for next week. Okay. So our jewelry, if you can share uh, one or two pieces that you like to start a styling with. So today I'm wearing what I have recently used to start a styling with. I have on the Alexa necklace and the Moki earrings or Mochi, depending on your opinion of how you pronounce M-O-C-H-I. 
And I like to start with these because the earrings have a lot of styling tips that I can start off right away with because I can talk about larger hoops really being a fashion trend that we started to see last summer and it's just like continuing, continuing, continuing. And these are a contemporary take on a hoop because it is flipped forward, more of an organic shape. Blue box inspired, so inspired by the pieces that come in the little blue boxes and they're only $30 a pair. So these demonstrate the sale really well because if you get a pair in silver and you get a pair in gold, then you can unlock other pieces for half price. And I usually like to start with layering when I'm doing a styling. And so having the Alexa necklace on, I can take it off and talk about it to share that the easiest way to layer is to get one of our pieces that come already layered because then you don't have to think about it. It's already done for you. And then I can share several styling tips with this one too because it has three trends that we've been seeing a lot of. So it has a heart, it has the chunky chain that we've been seeing for about two years now, and then it has the locket at the bottom which many of the designers are doing, and a lot of our pieces are designer inspired. So I'm able to hit a lot of things there. Then I can talk about the value. There's actually three necklaces here. This piece is $60. So if you got two pairs of these mochi earrings, one in silver, one in gold, to unlock those half prices, then you would be able to get Alexa for $30. And since there are three individual necklaces that come with this one, it's only $10 a necklace if you break it down like that, which is really a good value. So these are two pieces that I like to start my styling shows with because I can hit on the sale right away. I can, um, let people know that I'm gonna be giving a ton of styling tips. They see that right away. And also I'm able to let people know that I'm really into value as well. So these are great pieces to start with. And I would love for you to go back into the comments and share some of the pieces that you like to start your stylings with and why. I think that that would be super helpful for a lot of us. Not just new people, but some of us that just need a, another piece to grab onto. Alrighty, so let's look at recognition. In January week number two, our top seller was Deborah with $1,185. Let me see if I have some water in my thingy. Hold on, let me get a water. And our new stylist was also Deborah. <coughs> I'm choking on my spit. <laughs> That's much better. Okay. And our recruiter was Jill, who recruited Deborah, who was our top seller. Rich reward level one. We had five of us that reached this level. So myself, Justine, Jill, Deborah, and Pam. And also all five are qualified to be in the convention drawings. So during the convention recognition, they're actually gonna do $10,000 worth of giveaways. Super exciting. And to be in those giveaways, you had to be registered for convention and also sell $1,000 in the first two weeks of January, which matches the rich rewards. So that means that you also had the $250 in free jewelry. So great job for the five of you. All of the five that hit that rich reward level one were also registered for convention. So that just shows you the people that go to convention typically do better. Our current top sellers at this exact moment, number three is Jill, number two is myself, and number one is Justine Cadwallader. And our team incentives, we did not have a designer drawing this week. So when we have 5,000 net as a team, without me, remember net is what we get paid on, non is what we do not get paid on. Then I do a designer drawing and I have all different kinds of like wristlets and water bottles and cosmetic cases, all these little different things from like Coach and Kate Spade and Michael Kors. And it helps you do a little bit more than you might have if it was just yourself. So we have one at 5,000 net, we have one at 7,500 net. And then the first time that we have 10,000 net, I have a three piece set. So it's a big, huge Kate Spade tote, like work tote, has a place for a laptop. 
a smaller matching purse that turns into a crossbody or a shoulder bag, and then a little card case too, and all three of them match. So the first time we have 10,000 net. So this week we had, without me, 1,610 in net. Our net plus non was 2,744. So a little bit high on the non-commission. Um, we're working on it, right? <laughs> you wanna focus on net. It's so easy to get into those non pieces, you know, and just stack them and stack them and stack them, especially when we have these style drops that are so beautiful and you unlock it with a $40 order. A lot of times it's so easy to just do the $40 order, which you get paid on the $40 plus net, and then just put like all of these style drops, hundreds of dollars worth of style drops. And it's important as a stylist, that you use words that aren't gonna necessarily encourage that, so that you know they have reason to come back and keep purchasing more. You know, so you might not show all the style drops at once and then they just stack them all into their cart. Okay, you might want to start being a little bit more intentional with how you're showing your style drops to get extra orders with urgency. So as an example, we have these beautiful heart signature, baby signature earrings and bracelet. So you might decide that you're just gonna focus on the earrings and the bracelet and you're not gonna focus on all of the other limited edition impression bracelets at the same time. You're just focused on that. Or you may decide that you're gonna just focus on the emerald impression bracelet. So you're just focusing on the emerald impression bracelet. And so they're ordering so they can get that before it sells out. Then, you know, wait a little bit and pick another one that you think your customers are gonna like and then focus on that one. This way you get multiple orders and you're getting um, more than just $40 in the net because they're gonna wanna keep coming back. That's kind of the point of the style drops. The point of the style drops is not necessarily to make Park Lane a whole bunch of money because they are non-commissioned. We don't get paid on them. Um, the point of the style drops is to have something that they only have a, a small quantity of. They are discounting it drastically for this beautiful piece that people normally can't get, they've never seen before which is part of the reason why it's not a net item. That's part of the reason why it's a non-commissionable item. Um, and the idea is the reason why they do that for us is so that we can go and collect orders outside of shows that people might not normally place. So that's kind of the idea behind them. And when you use them in that way, it does grow tons of net sales for you because you're getting all these extra orders that you might not otherwise. But when you're just promoting style drops and they're like just stacked on top of one another, then that's what the customers are gonna do. They're gonna go unlock for 40 and then they're just gonna stack all the style drops in there and it doesn't really benefit you very much. You're not gonna get the full impact that you could if you took a different approach with it. So, moving on. Or like as an example, some of the pieces that are retiring, they're in the sparkle sale. I think that's what they called it. But those are non-commissioned because they've now discounted them so deep. This is another example. Like we're having um, a little bit of training here that I didn't put in here. But this would be another example. So like, the dreamy necklace. I can't believe they put it in there. And I'm so sad we're not gonna have the dreamy necklace anymore because we sold so many of them. Okay, so now you can go through and you can see everyone who always wanted a dreamy necklace and never got one. Now they can spend 40 and they're able to get that dreamy necklace only while they last for $30. So that would be another area where you would you would take that one piece that's drastically discounted, non-commissionable, 
and go look for extra orders that you might not normally have because you're gonna go catch all those people that wanted the dreamy necklace rather than putting all the pieces that are now highly discounted because they're retiring. So they're gonna unlock it with 40 and then get all of those pieces. You know, be smart and strategic with that. Okay, and continuing. So the trip contest has started. We've talked about already last week. Don't assume that you're not gonna earn it because it's intended for a brand new person to be able to earn it. It's very doable and achievable if you're consistent and intentional. But all the sales are counting right now. So net and non are counting. And we do have some of these things like the hearts. Those hearts are gonna be so popular, the heart signature earrings and bracelet. And what I suggest, because we do have the new line launching next week, I'm gonna suggest starting a show and finding something that you want to lean into. So as an example, these hearts or like maybe the dreamy necklace example that I gave you so that you can collect individual orders on this show. This is another place where you would want them to have multiple orders rather than just like one order with a whole bunch of non because you can be your own hostess and every single order gives you Free jewelry credit, credit as a hostess. The new jewelry line is going to launch on Wednesday evening. So that means that our special that we have right now with uh, if they spend 90, that's net. They can get a piece up to $200 for 30 and a piece up to 100 for free is going to go away right as they launch the new line on Wednesday. So you want to get all those extra orders before four o'clock Central Standard Time on Wednesday. Super, super important because that's going to go away. But then what will happen is the new line will launch on Wednesday night. So now you have a show open, you have orders on it, you can take the hostess credits with new jewelry. You can put in additional customer orders on your own show, like yourself as the customer, to bump up hostess rewards with new jewelry. Then submit that show on Wednesday night. So put the new jewelry in as the hostess. If you wanna add a couple of extra customer orders as yourself and submit it on Wednesday night so that Friday you get cut the check. So, Definitely lean into this. You're gonna get new jewelry and a check when you follow kind of that plan. So between now and Wednesday, four central time, so that's five Eastern time, try to use some of these little extra incentive pieces of jewelry like the hearts or one of the pieces that's retiring to collect extra orders. At five o'clock, the new line launches. Um, after we see the video, they show us a video of the new line and everything like that. Then it's gonna it's gonna launch on Wednesday night. Go in. If you wanna add a couple of customer orders yourself, you can. Um, fill out the hostess rewards, all new jewelry, submit it on Wednesday, get cut a check on Friday. Best way to get new jewelry, best way to get new jewelry. There will be opportunities. If you're um, wondering, you're gonna see this. They call it the vault, and you maybe have gotten some emails already with the vault stuff. The vault stuff is old stuff. So if you've been getting those emails, that is not new jewelry. That is old jewelry. You could buy discounted to use as an incentive and things like that. But it's really important to know you do not get any sales credit at all, at all, when you're ordering from the vault. So it's not going to show up for any team incentives. It's not going to show up for any rich rewards. It's not going to show up for trip points. It's not going to show up if Park Lane has extra incentives. Like they often are, you know, if you sell this much this week, you get this piece of jewelry, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to count for any of that. And there's going to be sample packages with new jewelry after the line launches. And if you order any of those, same thing. It does not count. It doesn't count for sales at all. And I have found historically that if you order from yourself as a customer using our sale, the two and four sale, and get paid on it, 
usually it's a better deal than if you buy the sample packs anyways. And eat definitely a better deal if it's going into a hostess order that you're putting in yourself. I mean, cause then you're just paying tax on it, it's free. So the best way to get the new jewelry is gonna be to order from yourself. And if you can have enough so that counts as a show and you can get even more as a hostess, that is the best way all the way around because then you get to be in team incentives, park lane incentives, rich rewards, you know, the travel trip points, any extra incentives they have for jewelry because it counts for sales and you typically have a better deal. And if you put it in on Wednesday night, then you know you're going to be cut your check on Friday, your commission from yourself. And typically for me, it's back in my bank account on Tuesday. And if you saw Carrie's video earlier this week about having a sample sale, if you're selling some of your samples as well, then you'll have the cash in hand to use to get the new jewelry. So that's my suggestion. If you want help with that or have any questions, definitely ask. Okay, try not to keep us too long. A little bit about uh, the Take a Peek group. So last week I mentioned that we're going to be breaking off from the Check Us Out Opportunity Group and starting another smaller Opportunity Group. And the idea behind it is when the Opportunity Group starts to get too big, it's very difficult to keep track of who you have in there so that you can do really good follow-up. And also it's hard for someone who is looking at the opportunity to feel like they're getting any individual attention, it can be very overwhelming. So by breaking off, I'm teaming up with four other really strong leaders. So um, they're from the Lewandowski organization, but they're not within our Golden Blossoms. So we're collaborating together. It's ready for inviting now. And at some point, you know, it this will be too big too, and we'll break off again and break off again and break off again. At some point, we probably will have one that's just Golden Blossoms. If it continues to work, we continue to grow. At some point, some of you are gonna have to start to break off to make these smaller groups, but it just creates a more intimate environment for people to get information in a non-intimidating, non-pressure way about the opportunity as a stylist. So I'm partnering um, with Shannon Peloza and um, Janine George, Marielle Klagman, and Kim Ostrick. So I love them. They're, we have a great relationship. We've been working as a small group now for more than a year. So it, it'll be a really great group. And we are ready for inviting. The way that it's gonna work initially is I am actually going to be inviting you guys individually in the same manner that I would invite a prospect. So that way, you can feel what it's gonna feel like when you invite somebody else. Similar to like when you get started and um, we have a show for you. So like when you get started, I do the show for you or the person that recruited you did your show for you so that you could feel what it felt like to be a hostess and you would understand how that felt and that process so that then when you had hostesses, you would know what they were gonna go through. So it's gonna be a similar process with inviting you to the Take a Peek. If you wanna be at the top of the list, cause I have to message you all individually, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll move you to the top. <laughs> Otherwise I'm just gonna kinda go down the list. I'm gonna start with the gals I'm working in a small group with. So there's a, a really small group of you I'm working with, specifically on team building. I'll invite you first and then I'll kind of go from there um, with the people who are direct to me and then your leader will invite you if you're not direct to me. But I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be fabulous. Okay, so another topic that came up recently that I'm gonna help you with is what to do with the people who are not engaging in your customer community group. So this was a topic that came up at the end of a small group call with a couple of you last night. And I wanted to give you a little bit of help with that because I figure that's a very common thing a lot of us are dealing with. So first of all, know that you are just planting seeds in these groups. So these groups are different 
than when you have uh, like a party group. It's different. A party group has urgency and a timeline. And that's what people feel when they're in there. And they're there to have fun, learn about the jewelry and to purchase. And they know that kind of going into it. With a community group or like a VIP group, it's, it's different because there's not a timeline on it. So when people are joining it, when you're inviting them to join it and they're agreeing, it's gonna be a different mindset when they're joining. There's not an urgency there. They aren't gonna feel like they're expected to have a certain action. And that's normal and it's the way that it should be. So what you wanna kind of focus on in these groups is bringing joy to people. So it's more than just selling and really you're creating a community. And when you bring joy to people, they're more likely to come back and interact and engage and be part of your group, which then even if they are people who may never make a purchase, they are helping other people in the group to see your posts because there's a lot of factors as to whether or not someone in your group is even seeing your posts. A lot of times people aren't seeing the posts and it's normal. It's just part of the Facebook algorithms. As an example, I have in my community group right now just over 500 members in there, okay? And I can look and I can see how many impressions a post has made. And typically, it's usually like maybe 60 or 70 people that have even seen the post out of 500. So that's more than 400 people that never even saw the post. And it's just kind of normal, it's just part of it. But the more that people are going in there and interacting or even just going in and looking, because Facebook can tell even when you're scrolling, if you stop and pause, like it counts that, it's taking that into it. The people that are getting the joy from there, they're responding to something in there is helping more people see it, even if they're not commenting necessarily. So having a focus that's not so heavy geared on selling helps with that because they're gonna wanna keep coming back. Not that we're not gonna sell, um, but it does help. So just think about like, how are you bringing joy to people? Or just like whimsical things. I'm looking to see what else I wrote. Okay, so then there's another um, tactic that you can use. So this is something I plan on doing actually soon. When it does start to get like really stale. And you're know when it's really stale because it's obvious, you know, like nothing's happening. So this usually means nobody's seeing anything and or your content is not interesting to them. So this is a little bit tedious, okay, but you can actually make a list of everyone that's in your group and start going through and sending them an individual message. And in the message, you're gonna say something like, hey, um, you know, I'm trying to make my styling group more of a community feel have there been any posts recently that you think kind of go with that community feel? So when you message them something like that, it does a couple of things. First of all, it tells Facebook that you and this person have a relationship. So for like technical reasons, <laughs> it does something because you've had a message in Messenger Facebook thinks you have a relationship with this person and automatically, if nothing else happens, they start to see more of your posts because you've talked to Messenger. The second thing is, they probably haven't seen one of your posts recently. And so what will happen is they'll have to go to your group and look, right? If they're gonna respond to you and answer your question, they have to go and look. And they may say, I don't know, I haven't seen a post in forever or like they might say I don't remember what's the name of your group you know and then you can send in the link so they can find it again easily and then they're going to go through and look at the posts so now they're in the group going through and looking at the posts so once again for technical reasons this tells Facebook that they think your stuff is interesting even if they haven't commented you know so there's a lot of technical that works right there 
but also they're, they may see things that they like and start to interact, which is great. It brings them back into the group. They may give you some really valuable feedback and be like, you know, it's kind of salesy. I don't, I don't know. Or they may say, I actually loved it when you posted about your favorite shoes. I've been posting about shoes a lot lately just because that's what's been on my mind. Um, but the, you know, you're going to get some feedback and then you're going to have some people that are going to say, I am not really interested in that group anymore. And that's okay. You can remove them from the group. They can remove themselves or you can remove them. Ebony, you can't delete people. You can, re you can remove people though. You're, you go to your group settings, look at members, and then there's like three little dots that you can push. And then one of the choices is to remove the member. But I would not remove a member unless you try to have a private conversation with them first and they either say that they're not interested in the group anymore or it's crickets and you never hear anything from them at all. Then I would remove them from the group because it, if you have a lot of people in the group that are not participating, it does hurt your group and make it so that the posts aren't being seen as much. But it's important to send a message and see because it may not be them. It might just be Facebook algorithms that are the reason why they aren't seeing it. And also know long term, so it takes a lot of patience to grow a VIP group. Long term, it will pay off. And it may not be the people in your group are the ones that buy, but it might be that they know somebody else that they end up inviting to your group because they're in your group and they like your group that ends up being the person that changes your business when, like 360. So don't worry so much if they are buying or not. It is important though that they're participating and having those individual messages should help with that for technical reasons and relationship reasons. And so then circling back, circling back where I started with it's not the same as a party because there's not the timeline or the urgency. Circling back around there with these community groups to get sales, which you do want, right? Because you don't want to just bring people joy all the time and then not get paid eventually. I mean, it's human. That's fair. That's why you're a stylist because you're looking for the commission. It's just that, you know, you want it to be a byproduct, but you have to create then a timeline and an urgency on occasion so that they do submit the order. As you're showing the jewelry in these groups, just because they're not hitting the button and pushing you know, the cart through right then doesn't mean that they're not creating a wish list. They are creating wish lists of things that they like that you're showing. Like you showing them all this jewelry in these groups, th their lists get longer and longer and longer. And so then the next step of your job is to create then an opportunity for them to purchase that has like a, a timeline and it has an urgency. So minimally once a month, you can do it. You can either create a sale, you know, like an event in your group, like create a sale in your group, like a social sale, um, or you can self host, you can host a Facebook party yourself. Uh, you can tap into something that the larger group is doing, just something that is an actual event that you're doing that now these people are like, Oh, it's time to shop. It's time to buy. You know, they have the opportunity cause you can kind of fall into that as well, where you're creating all this community but you're never giving them an opportunity to shop. You think you are, but it's not, it's not actually the way that they're perceiving it. So those are my tips to help you with your VIP group and your community group to help nurture it. You know, think of it kind of like a farmer and you're planting seeds. So you're planting the seeds when you get them into the group. And then, you know, you're fertilizing them and you're watering them and they're getting their sunshine. So that's, you know, all the styling tips and you're showing them the jewelry and they're getting community and joy. And it, it eventually it ends up surfacing to the top and you will have a harvest. 
you just have to be patient in that situation and you have to go through all the steps. And then you have to have the harvest. So the harvest being that event that you're gonna have. So hopefully that helps. If you have more questions about it, definitely pop them in the comments. So coming up next, we have convention next week. A couple of us are gonna be in St. Louis. I'm excited about it. And let me know if you wanna be at the top of the inviting list for the Take a Peek group, which is our opportunity group that we'll be sharing more about being a stylist. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. I'm excited about snow. I'm hoping that's happening. I'm hoping I'm gonna watch it from the mountains, but I don't think that Carl's on board with it. <laughs> we'll see. And I will see you guys next week.